Buddhist monks were a symbol of hope and defiance during the dark years of Myanmar's military dictatorship. But as the country opens up to the world, they've taken a radical turn. Muslims account for less than 10% of Myanmar's population. Today, rising sectarianism is driving more and more of them out of the country. For 30 years, Sway Min ran this bicycle repair shop with a diverse mix of Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, and Hindu customers. But in July, false rumors that a Muslim man had raped a Buddhist woman triggered riots. Buddhist mobs attacked Muslim homes and businesses in Mandalay, the second largest city. Two people were killed and dozens were injured during the riots. <laughs> Tun Tun Jia was Sway Min's wife. Since this happened, do you feel safe here in Mandalay or do you want to leave? The million niao shi lo ala lo blue ma lo muwe kwe bi de ba. Million niao ga shi ni de lo. Who is responsible? Do you feel like it is getting worse for Muslims here in Mandalay and around Myanmar? The Buddhist mobs that targeted Muslims over the summer marked the first such attack in a major city. Outside the mosque where Sway Min said his last prayers, these policemen stand guard. <laughs> Some people have said that when there's been bouts of violence over the past couple of years that the Myanmar police have turned a blind eye to attacks on Muslims. But Muslim leaders tell a different story. Mulana Nur Muhammad is head of the June Mosque. Why do you think this kind of discrimination and these attacks are becoming more common in Myanmar today? Who do you think was behind it? The man no one wants to name is Ashin Waratu, the face of radical Buddhism in Myanmar. In his sermons, he's called Muslims mad dogs who must be removed from the country if the Buddhist majority is to be safe. And it was Ratu who stoked the Mandalay riots by posting the rape fabrication on his Facebook account. His hate-mongering campaign has harmed Buddhists as well. Nui Ni Nin's husband, Tun Tun, was killed during the summer riots by Muslims seeking vengeance. <laughs> So I see here in your living room many images of Buddhist monks and leaders. What's your opinion of uh, Wiratu? Our interview was interrupted by a government agent. Who are you? Huh? I'm assistant engineer manager of this office. Okay. Yes. So why did you interrupt the interview? Uh, uh, my officer instructs me. Uh, okay. Why did you interview for this one? Who is your officer? 
My officer is a the manager engineer. Can I speak with him? Uh, he is going to the jungle. Oh, okay. To Yangon. Yeah, so who is the boss here? Are you the boss? Uh, so because we spoke with her, we have her permission to come okay. interview her. Okay, okay. I, I, I would like okay, to yeah. speak with the consular, no? More than 2,500 monks live and study under Wiratu at his Mandalay Monastery. As his radicalism has increased, so has his following. <laughs> There's a lot of tension right now between Buddhists and Muslims around Myanmar. Do you think there's a future where both groups can live alongside each other? Outside Waratu's residence, a poster highlights alleged crimes committed by Muslims against Buddhists. So I have a copy of Time magazine here. The cover has your picture and it says, The Face of Buddhist Terror. What do you think of this? <laughs> But you have gone out of your way to cultivate this image. You've styled yourself the Buddhist bin Laden. Uh, you've said that President Obama has black Muslim blood. He's tainted. I mean, these kinds of statements are inflammatory. Your message is clearly very popular in Myanmar today. Why do you think what you're preaching is really taking root among people here? The <laughs> When the violence started here in Mandalay in early July, it was because of a false rumor that uh, a Buddhist woman had been raped by a Muslim man. But you went ahead and posted this unverified rumor on your Facebook page, which is very popular. And some accuse you of stoking that anger, which led to the deaths of two people, including one Buddhist. What can you say to that? Before we left, Wiratu showed us his media lab. Uh, he just opened this account last night. The next day, we met with Galan Ni Sayata, a senior monk at his monastery on the other side of town. Sayata spent 20 years in prison for protesting against the military. Now, he's taking on Wiratu. During the riots, Sayata spent two nights in the street working to calm angry mobs that were looting Muslim businesses. I don't but despite all his efforts, Sayata is anxious about what the future has in store. Are Watu and his followers still stirring up trouble? Same kind of move, so you know, but you may as well. 
ไอ้ตัวเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเ